Welcome to Proverbs for Life Today, a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. My name is Bert Allen. Today we come to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, and it says, The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. You know, if you're going through life and you're just trashing everything that you own, you ought to think about what's going on in your life. I know a woman who lived in a house for many years and she never paid rent, didn't have to pay any utilities, and just lived there for free. But she never contributed much, if anything, towards keeping the house up. And over the years, the house fell into greater and greater and greater disrepair. And then in the end, Although she didn't originally own the house, at the end she owned the house. But if you tear down the house by neglecting it or tearing it down by overt acts of pulling it apart and smashing it to pieces, you go, well, that would just be the most foolish thing you could do. You know, one of the things about houses is, in my experience, is they cost money just about every month to fix up, maintain, get the plumbing done, get the yard taken care of, getting trees cut down if they need trimming or just taking out altogether. But there are always a lot of things to do at a house. When you own a house, it's like building a house. But in my case, my father and I built a very large house, uh, about more than 3,000 square feet, down near a beach. As a matter of fact, it was right on a beach lot. And we spent many years building that house. It took us a long time to build it up. But you know, I watched other people just tear down a house in a few minutes. And that's what foolish people do. They can literally tear down the house piece by piece with their own hands. But think about this as a metaphor for your life. That you're looking at your life and you ask yourself, are you building something worthwhile every day? You might remember the prophet Haggai who looked at the people who came back to the land of Israel in Jerusalem, and they said, Haggai told them, y'all have built great houses for yourself, but you didn't build anything for God here. You're supposed to be building the temple, and you're not doing that. And Haggai urged them to get back working, and God would bless them for doing that. You know, God always blesses us to build up a house. To build a house, we'll be careful to build. Paul said we must be careful to build upon the foundation of Christ and build with gold, silver, precious stones and not wood, hay, and straw. God says if you build it with good stuff, gold, silver, precious stones, when the fire tests that stuff, it'll, it will not be consumed by the fire. But if it's built with junk, it'll be burned up. When you build a house and you leave it, and then a fool comes along, they will tear down that house with their own hands. And you go, what kind of craziness is that? Well, God can build up your life, and then you can act foolish and tear it down with your own hands. God says, I'm warning you, you can build your house. The wise woman will always be building the house, but the foolish woman will always be tearing it down with her own hands. Let me ask you today, if you were to look back over the year so far, would you say that you've been building your house and it looks good? Or would you say that you're taking steps to tear down your own house? Today's the day. Go back, repent, turn from your sin, and say, I'm done with all the alcohol. I'm done with all the drugs. I'm done with all the crazy stuff I've been doing. I'm done with the bad immoral relationships. I'm done with all the grief I've been giving people. I'm done with all the broken relationships. I'm tired of breaking down and tearing down my own house. I've acted foolishly. And God says, today's the day. Give your heart to Jesus Christ. If you don't know what I'm talking about, at the end of this video, I'll be standing in front of a bricks background. And you can learn how you can become a wise builder today by faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you can receive that free gift of eternal life today by faith alone. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. May we be the kind of people who build our house today. 
Lord, I'd pray that for all of us who've been tearing down the houses last year, or perhaps for even longer, that they and we, all of us, Lord, would turn back to you in our hearts and leave all of our foolish behavior behind. We love you, Lord. Thanks for your kindness and goodness to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question. Why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. Most folks, when they hear that question, they tell me, well, I've been good or tried to do more good than bad or I tried hard or I've done a lot of nice things and I hope God will let me into heaven. They somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You see, for every person who lives today on earth in human flesh, we've all sinned, every one of us. We've all told a lie. We've all done or said something that made somebody else angry and we were doing it out of anger ourselves. We've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another. God says that's all sin and I look upon that as falling short of my glory, God says. God says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sin, we incurred the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 6.23 continues and says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far, we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord, and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5, 8 tells us. It says, But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this. That I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day. But I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you. The free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. Receive the free gift. Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty eternal destruction. So 
we can receive that free gift right now by faith and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. I confess too that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me, that Jesus Christ is God and he died on the cross for me. You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend at christassembly.org. That's friend at christassembly.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. Scripture quotations taken from the NASB, New American Standard Bible, copyright 1995 by the Lockman Foundation. Used by permission, all rights reserved.